Now, so I'm going to be presenting two arguments for why I think, um, why I think atheism is true. For my first argument, the existence of the universe. I actually think that the very existence of the universe is a logical problem for God. I'm willing to bet that nobody here seriously doubts that the universe exists, right? The reality of the universe and the objects within it are just too obvious to deny. I'm also willing to bet that the theists in this room believe that God is maximally great. He's, he's a maximally great being. Uh, he's absolutely perfect, both morally and ontologically. So what is meant by this? What is meant by ontological perfection? Well, there are things called great-making properties. Uh, theologians have identified these, and they, they call them, uh, them great-making properties, things like power, uh, having knowledge, being loving. Uh, and God, if he exists, is a maximally great being uh, in that he has all of these properties to their maximal degrees. As in, there couldn't be a being that is more loving than God because God is maximally loving. Uh, the words of Christian philosopher J.P. Moreland can help shed some light on this. Uh, J.P. says, To say that God is perfect means that there's no possible world where he has his attributes to a greater degree. God is not the most loving being that happens to exist. Rather, God is the most loving being that could possibly exist. So that God's possessing the attribute of, of being loving is to a degree such that it is impossible to have it to a greater degree. So the question I want to ask us tonight is if the Christian God were to exist, would he have reasons to create the universe? Could he have reasons to create the universe? The theist, of course, only has one option here. He must answer yes because, well, after all, the theist does accept the existence of the universe. So he must say that if God exists, he would have reasons to create such a universe. Um, however, I want to argue that the answer to this question is actually no. That God, if he exists, would never actually create anything let alone an entire universe and populate it with the creatures that we find it to be populated with. The argument involves the term God world. No, this isn't a, a theme park. Um, <laughs> in the context of this argument, God world is a term that I, that I use to refer to that possible world where God exists alone and nothing else exists for eternity. So maybe you're wondering what I mean when I say possible worlds, right? Well, when I say that X is a possible world, all I mean is that X is a possible way that reality could have been. When I say that X is the actual world, I'm talking about how reality really is. So again, to say that God world is a possible world is only to say that um, it's, it's possible that God could have not created the universe. So I'm referring to that, that alternate reality where God never actually creates anything. So um, if you want to go to my first slide. Uh oh. How is everybody doing today? <laughs> okay, uh, this, I call this the cosmological argument for atheism. Uh, it reads like this, if the Christian God exists, then God world is the unique best possible world. Premise two, if God world is the unique best possible world, then the Christian God would maintain God world. Premise three, God world is false because the universe does exist. And conclusion, therefore, the Christian God, as so defined, does not exist. Now. This argument sure seems valid, uh, but is it sound? Are the premises true? Premise one, you know, if, if the Christian God exists, then God world is the unique best possible world. Why think that this premise should be true? Well, if God exists, remember, he's the best possible being, meaning that he has, he has all those great making properties to their maximal degree and no such properties to any lesser degree. But now, a world composed entirely of the single best possible being would be a world composed entirely of all those great making properties reality and God would just be identical. So the reality would be made up of these maximally great properties. Unless there is some independent source of goodness that exists outside of God, which I know my, my opponent rejects and a, and a lot of uh, theistic philosophers reject, um, and, unless there's some independent source of good, then God world must be the unique best possible world. You can't get a better situation than a world composed entirely of all those great making properties to their maximal degree, which is what God is. Um, so truly, this is, this is just the cat's pajamas of possible worlds. Now, premise two. If God world is a unique, best possible world, then the Christian God would maintain or preserve God world. Well, I think that this is true. 
Well, if God exists, then he is truly a maximally great being. He would be aware of the fact that himself existing alone uh, as God world is the greatest possible situation that could ever exist. A maximally great being, being wouldn't introduce uh, limited uh, entities uh, with limited degrees of, of great making properties like Genesis would claim, right? Uh, Genesis says that you know, God creates Adam and Eve, but Adam and Eve don't have knowledge to their maximal degrees. So right there you have God creating um, entities with properties that are less than perfect. So he's degrading the state of affairs. Um, and of course to suggest that God is in the degrading business is to suggest that he's not maximally great. Premise three, God world is false because the universe exists. This, is, this should be obvious enough. Uh, it's, it's not the case that the only thing that exists is God because you all exist, so unless you're Spinoza, uh, you should accept this <laughs> premise. So the conclusion, of course, is therefore that God as so defined doesn't exist. 